President Kofi warmly greets General Alfred Grunther in the Presidential Palace's Salon Murat, where Napoleon once welcomed his staff officers. Here, President Kofi confers the Legion of Honor created by Bonaparte himself on the commander of NATO, the most prized of French decorations for an American ally. Venice is hit by, of all things, a flood, with the city of canals plagued with canals where canals shouldn't be. Pedestrians take to catwalks with no gondolas in sight, or else slosh through the water up to their knees. The people of Venice aren't the only ones inconvenienced by the watery blanket. Even the pigeons are driven from their curbside haunts as floods make news in Venice. President Eisenhower presents the Collier Trophy for achievement in American aviation to James Kindleberger, board chairman of North American Aviation, builder to the first land-based supersonic fighters, and Edward Heinemann of Douglas Aircraft, developers of the first carrier-based supersonic aircraft. Aviation's Men of the Year. Also in Washington, the Christmas season brings a welcome visitor from the north. Traveling by real live reindeer, but without passport or portfolio, he is greeted by as enthusiastic an audience as ever hailed a distinguished visitor to the nation's capital. Santa is the man of the season, a round and jolly fellow who always manages to be everywhere at Christmas time, though never in any one place for very long. At night, on a specially decorated stage, and under the age-old theme of Christmas, the Capitol's Yule season is officially proclaimed by President Eisenhower as he lights the 67-foot-high National Community Christmas tree. <laughs> After almost 2,000 Christmases, mankind still seeks the path to peace on Earth. Saranac Lake, New York, turns out for the world premiere of Warner Brothers' The Silver Chalice. Hollywood stars are here for the premiere, which the Adirondack Mountain Town won in a nationwide contest based on the sale of Christmas seals. Actor Alan Hale is welcomed by Art Linkletter, who sponsored the contest. George O'Hanlon and his wife are among Movieland visitors. Gonzalez Gonzalez, who played in The High and the Mighty, is on hand. And so is Marion Carr, who finds Hollywood styles good for keeping cool in the mountains. Anne Robinson also has discovered Saranac Lake is very well ventilated. The Cinemascope Warner Color Film stars Virginia Mayo with Peer Angeli, Jack Palance, and Paul Newman. Victor Sawville, who produced and directed the film, is here too. And the star, Virginia Mayo, welcomes the crowd at the world premiere of The Silver Chalice. Big cats, playful but not friendly, go through their paces for 6,000 youngsters at a special circus in London for kids from orphanages, hospitals, and schools. Here's uh, the latest method uh, for reducing. If it doesn't work, just increase the treatments. When big guys fight, little guys are safest behind big guys. Whoops! Up there, everybody follows the straight and narrow path. French acrobats in a spine-tingling stunt at a dizzy height. A jet-propelled wind-up for the circus in London town. Though snow is scarce, ski jumpers soar onto the winter sports scene in the Torger Tokel Memorial Tournament at Bear Mountain, New York. Stop, swoops down the jumping hill, covered with 60 tons of artificial ice. Leaping 146 feet for third place. Art Tokel, younger brother of Torger, makes the longest jump of the day, 153 feet, but it's only good enough for a second. It's form that pays off, and Art Devlin, America's two-time Olympian, flashes the easy grace that captures top spot in the competition. Artistic pair, skiers Devlin and Tokel.
unbeaten Utahs on the attack against unbeaten LaSalle in New York's Madison Square Garden. The LaSalle Five shows early why it's the nation's top-ranked team. But Utah, playing hustling aggressive ball, stays with the heavily favored explorers. Roger Tonneson passes to Ed Peppel, who arches a sweeping hook shot that hits the rim and drops through. LaSalle comes storming right back, setting up their All-America ace, Tom Gola, who shoots and hits. The big crowd of almost 11,000 sees the slick-handling, smooth-moving LaSalle club look for an opening. Charlie Greenberg passes to Charlie Singley, who flips to Gola. Driving in, he passes back to Frank Blackter, who finds the range. But Utah, beginning to spurt, has Gary Bergen, a string bean, six foot eight inch junior, draw a bead on the basket. The LaSalle bench is glum as Utah shows off some fancy pass work of its own, with Art Fundy from the outside popping in a two-pointer. And underdog Utah wins 